Maybe we don't know. Maybe we don't know. This time, 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 this time
at this point, I'll probably put this out right around the time the film goes online. Um, so a lot of people will have either just seen the film or haven't quite seen it yet. And just to give my take on, on what the film was, I went in, frankly, expecting just more climbing porn. You know, you've got one of the top climbers on the planet and why not just show him doing hard routes? You know, it's a pretty simple formula. People are going to watch it. But that's not what it was at all. And I really appreciated the fact that there's history and culture and some struggle, some internal struggle that we see in Alex. And I wanted to get you solo because I want to know basically some of the things you learned, what you've seen Alex struggle with and what you think his biggest struggles are. So let's start with how did the idea for the film come about that you wanted to show this story instead of just Alex sending the gnar? Well, I think... I don't even use the word gnar, by the way. No, that just but it is gnar. in my head, <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, 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 in, it's intense what he does. Um, I think it started... Well, I'm a, I'll first let's say... First, let's say I'm a stills photographer. Like... I'm not a filmmaker. This right. is my first film. Well, now you are. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> so whenever I can, I I like to tell the story through a still frame. Mm-hmm. But um, I've been there for a lot of Alex's harder ascents in the last five years, and I started to notice patterns. Sure. Through the process. Yep. And as the years went on, we just became closer and closer and closer friends. Like, I mean, he's like a little brother to me and I'm probably like a little brother to him. Right, right, <laughs> to right. To be honest. Um, so we've traveled a lot and and s- one of the things was I, I just felt like the story involved, the story did serve motion um, mm-hmm. because there's all of his emotions and the complexity around him actually trying something hard for him. Um, is you can't capture in a still photograph, and print is basically dead, right? Um, so editorial is basically dead. Excuse me. Um. So yeah, I decided to make a movie. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, the movie's fucking fantastic. So thank you. Good job on your first film. <laughs> Thanks, and I'm always um been very interested in climbing history. Mm-hmm. Um. I've been climbing for over 20 years and I've watched how the sport has changed. And especially right now, I think it's like change, changing in the exponential rate, basically. Yeah. Olympics next year, all these things. And um, there's still some like f- stories that need to be told and not forgotten. And Alex learned to climb from Wolfgang Gulick and Norbert Sonder and Alex's father. And um, I think that direct connection is uh i think it just really warranted the historical perspective to add yeah. more of a dynamic he growing up in the franken era he's kind of the red idea of the red point or the rope punkt is like is this paradigm shifting concept yeah and he's kind of the first descendant of that place yeah so something i did today in preparation for this conversation was I called my friend Russ Clune, who features prominently in the film. Mm-hmm. And I wanted to know, did Wolfgang and Kurt Albert and these people that came before Alex, that Alex looks up to and is obviously, you know, he's followed in their footsteps and then created his own path. I wanted to know if they put the same kind of pressure on themselves as we saw Alex put on himself in the film and if they got down on themselves and what that would look like. Because we only see, especially back then, there wasn't the, I mean, Wolfgang Gulick wasn't on Instagram, you know. We didn't get to see the day-to-day. We saw photos on climbing magazines and the occasional video of these guys, and that was it. Um so I wanted to know, is is that part of that culture? You know, seeing Alex respond to 
failure the way that he did is that part of that culture. And what Russ said is that they were very, very intense, but that he doesn't remember them ever being down on themselves or throwing wobblers or anything like that. But he said it may have been just the times. It wasn't accepted then to do that, to show your emotions in that way. So I'm curious, where do you think that part of Alex's personality comes from? And and I want to know how it affects him too. Um, yeah, we dug into that a lot as well during the film. And Norbert Sonner was like, you know, and Russ. We asked Russ as well, and they both said no. You know, like... Norbert was very he really wanted to make sure that we knew that he felt like Wolfgang was lazy oh he right he only climbed when he was inspired mm. and other than that he just trained right um so yeah the film is obviously very much about Alex's struggle with fear of failure struggle and with the fear of failing and mm-hmm. and not reaching his p- fullest potential and I think it's difficult because everything is so outward facing now. Right. Too. Yeah. Everything that he does. I mean, when he is climbing, the crowd goes quiet and mm-hmm. all you hear are people breathing and shutter clicks. Right. That's gotta be fucking stressful. Yeah. It's like an arena, you know? Yep. It's like, it's the new football field or something. Right. Yeah. Um, and so over time <laughs> I had met him right when he started trying lucid dreaming, like we literally yeah. met in, underneath that boulder in the middle of the day. It was like 85 degrees. <laughs> right. He was trying it in the sun. <laughs> right. Because conditions don't matter. Right? Yeah, exactly. He's like, well, I just want to <laughs> see if I can do the moves. You know, you're like, wow, okay. Um, and so that was his longest project ever. Right. He had never tried anything for longer than two days yeah. prior to that. And so, and I think he tried that thing for five or six days or something. Mm-hmm. Which still doesn't even sound like a project to me. No. <laughs> No, yeah. not at all. Um, you know, and then we just started traveling and then he did Fight Club in Canada and that took him six days or something, you know. And and I was always just like, dude, when are you going to... Oh, and a big one actually was the finish line in South Africa. Yeah. Um, he obsessed over it and struggled with it. And mm. then after he climbed it, he had uh, he was almost sick. Like mm. he had put so much energy into it. Was it a, a head game? Because that one's pretty tall, right? He's unaffected by Okay. So it was just a know, difficulty thing. Didn't didn't did suit him. Put in so much energy and I and I what I think it might be <clears throat> is that it's the kind of his self talk in his head, right? Like he wants to do things quickly, he wants to do them in great style and um and do them well. And so I think um I just kinda had noticed this pattern of like him shutting down when things weren't going well and he's like a dear friend yeah and, totally uh, totally it's really hard to watch you know yeah. and like you know anybody whose great friend is struggling you want to help them mm-hmm. you know and so but you he, also have to capture the story yeah but then you want to be motherly or brotherly right. or fatherly or whatever to him and be right. like, it's okay man like change your perspective at all it's gonna be good like you can, we can just come back tomorrow you know and he's mm-hmm. just like no, that's not what it's about. You know, it's like, I should be able to do this. And and so I really kind of wanted to unpack that idea. And I thought the film was a great way to do that. Yeah, I agree completely. It, it got me asking a lot of questions. And I sat in that hangar where you showed the film last night today, talking to a group of people about the film and about all of the questions it brought up. So... I think it did its job, you know, it's, it's people are talking about it. People are excited about it. Do you think that, well, first off, does Alex value sending something quickly more than he values harder difficulty? Um, I think he's learning the value of, No, you can go ahead. Okay. I think he's learning to value the idea of effort. Yeah. And really putting in time and really understanding how, what that feels like. 
Yeah. Um, but prior to the prior, I think prior to the last year, it was a lot about um, self doubt and fear. Mm -hmm. You know, like does I, the sending quickly translate into it's going to look better in the magazines or on the internet or does that even matter at all? I don't think that matters at all. It's just all internal. I think it would be, yeah, if, yeah, I think. Does it have yeah, any? If he could make money as a, as a professional athlete and have nobody watch, that would be totally fine. Like, right. I think it's really yeah. self-driven <clears throat> um, in terms of climbing difficulty. But the thing is, is, you know, the cliche term, the 10,000 hour rule. Right. I mean, he probably reached that by, you know, a decade right. ago. Sure. Like that was just the beginning. Sure. He has put in so much time and so much effort. Mm -hmm. Every route he has gone to up until recently. Yeah. He's been so overprepared that they're almost like a joke. <clears throat> like, yeah. You know, he has his limits in terms of style or maybe even genetics or whatever. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, for the most part, like, he is overprepared for anything that fit, that suits him. Sure. And so he's just now trying to explore what that feels like. And it, and I think it's just, I mean, he talks about in the film, he's just like, I have never tried anything hard yeah. because I was scared of failing. <clears throat> yeah. And you know, I won't say what it was. I, I don't know if that's been kept secret or I think it's powerful for people to see that what, what route he's trying. It's an iconic, really hard route. And he goes in so confident. And the confidence fucking blew me away. I was like, really? Like, you know, this route took one of the best climbers ever. This ridiculous amount of time. And you're just going to do it in a day? maybe flash it like you think you got a 50 50 shot of flashing it that kind of confidence is inspiring and seems a little crazy like a little out there and then the outcome of that felt a little bit stressful like it was it was a really amazing way to start the film does he feel like he has to live up to Wolfgang, Kurt Albert. I think those are hard. If you ask him, he'll say no. Yeah. It's hard. To, it's That's hard. why I'm asking you. Yeah. It, <laughs> um, I've spent a lot of time asking him and it's been really hard to get to the bottom of it. I really think it's because so many people have believed in him and invested in him with their time, with their emotions, with their friendships, mm -hmm. like his coaches at Craft Factory, Patrick, yep. Dicky, They've like put so much time and effort and his family and like his friends and all everyone's supporting him. I think he doesn't, and himself, he doesn't want to let those people down. Right. I, I don't think it's driven by media. I don't think it's driven by sponsors. Like, I think it's a personal endeavor. Yep. Oh, look who's joining us here. Oh, nothing like <laughs> audio bombing us. <laughs> 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 so i'll just i'll just fill alex in really quick here we're just chatting about the film and the ideas of you know showing those personal failures struggles and and what those mean to you um and what they what it meant for ken to see them and what he's learned from them um because i just think it's far more valuable than just watching someone climb something hard or something cool. Well, and that can be really valuable, but understanding that someone like you struggles as well, you know, I think is a massive thing for a lot of people um, because we don't get to see that all the time, you know, and, and I had just asked Ken this and I'm going to ask you, I, I honestly don't think I'm going to get a, a straight answer. <laughs> <laughs> we probably won't. <laughs> but do you feel like in any way, shape, or form that you have to live up to those legends of 
Wolfgang and Kurt Albert, legends that we learned about in a time where we didn't see every facet of their life. We just saw these very strict blurbs, you know, mostly the success. Um, no, I don't feel like I have to live up to that. I mean, I'm still climbing for myself, to be honest. So yeah. I don't feel like in any way I have to live up to those legends, especially because, I mean, for me, I'll never be a legend and they will always be. So in my eyes, I can't mm. live up to what they have achieved. So I'm literally just climbing for myself pretty much. And um, I'm happy that I can make money with it, which means I can go climbing more often. <laughs> Yeah, and actually I think that's a really powerful part of the story, you know, that you obviously just love rock climbing. Oh yeah, I really like rock climbing. It's a good sport, I think. <laughs> it's lots of fun. It really is lots of fun. Yeah, I totally disagree with you though that you're never going to be a legend. I think there if you're if you haven't already achieved that status, it's in the making. Be, because of some of the things you've done. Do, do you have to die to become a legend? You don't have to. Okay, not not in my eyes anyway. Thank God. <laughs> uh, can I tell a story? Yeah, please do. Um, this didn't make it in the film because I unfortunately didn't have the camera rolling, but it was one of the most amazing things I've ever seen. But we were filming on Wall Street that Wolfgang established. Wolfgang route, yeah. Yep, the first 14B in the world. And... Uh, I mean, it was like, Dickie says it's like 28 degrees Celsius, which is like 90 some 90 degrees or something. And horrible conditions. It's humid. It's the middle of the day. And uh, if you've climbed in the Frankenura, you understand how um, kind of brutal it is. The holds are small mm -hmm. and far apart, and your feet are really bad. There's seven Bs where I couldn't even do the move. Right. So, Alex, you did all the moves. You actually did climb the head wall that day, but it took you a handful of tries and it was not okay. But So he lowers, and then as he's packing his bag, just like pretty frustrated, um, Alex Lowther, who was there, who was a producer on the, on the film, was like, um, you okay, man? Like, he had just showed up, had never seen right. an Alex meltdown before. <laughs> was like, are you okay, man? You're going to be all right? Like, don't, you know, drive too fast or whatever. And Alex goes, it's okay. Only strong climbers die in car accidents. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> oh, wow. <clears throat> so... Yep, that's pretty much it. <laughs> so I feel like I'm I'm kind of safe because only strong climbers down the road, so no worries. <laughs> well, I'm going to ask you this, and I want to hear the answer from both of your perspectives, actually. Do you think, you obviously set really high expectations for yourself, you know, in the film you say, I should be able to do this. And, and we all do that. I mean, I have my own expectations of myself. Ken has his own expectations. Do you feel like those are, they help you or do they hinder you? Or is it both? I guess it always depends a little bit. I mean, expectations is the reason for why I get stronger, you know? Yeah. And it's not an expectation that anybody else has. I think it's an expectation that I look at a route and I feel the holes and I feel like I should be able to climb that in one day. And uh, not achieving that obviously is frustrating and in some ways hindering, you know, to climb that specific route maybe. But in the long run, I think that's something that is motivating for me to become stronger. Yeah, I think that's a great answer. And, and I think we need expectations to to get stronger. Oh, of course. If we're satisfied w with what we've got, then we won't improve, I think. Yeah. So expecting to be able to climb harder is, I think, a good basis to become stronger. Yeah, for sure. Ken, what's your take on watching Alex's high-level expectations coming into these big projects? I think on the surface level, it's really easy to judge. You're really, it's really easy to like look at him and be like, dude, it's just rock climbing. Yeah. You know, you just come back tomorrow. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. But, um, 
knowing Alex so well and watching him through the time, all these years, like I understand that it's much more than that. And I think, um, you know, he's in the 99th percentile, like, right. He's at the very, very top of the game and to achieve greatness takes a lot of hard work and a lot of, and there's a, there's a lot of pressure, whether it's self-inflicted, inflicted from exterior, um, sources or whatever you have to navigate and move through those. And I think that, um, everyone wants to do things that, to their fullest potential and be the best that they can at whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think understanding the, just the foundation that Alex has and the amount of effort and the amount of time I can see through the, the meltdown and the mental breakdown. Right. Um, cause I understand. <clears throat> and that was part of the story was I was trying to unpack that for people for sure. Yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's all this research around grit or determination and one of the key factors in having that, that real deep grit that's going to cause you to improve or help you improve is that you really fucking care about the thing that you're trying to do. Um, that's a massive part of it. You can't just, oh, I sort of care about rock climbing and reach your potential. It's not going to happen that way. Yeah, more shits should be given. Yeah. In yeah. a lot of things in this world. And I think, um, <clears throat> you know, whatever you love most in the world is probably where sh- all of that should start. Yeah. On a scale of zero to 100 shits, how many shits do you give about clipping chains, Alex? 101. <laughs> <laughs> I give all the shits, I think. I mean, it is important for me. I don't, I don't know why, but it is important for me. And I yeah. I just like to see how far I can push my limits in climbing. And I don't know why that is so attracting for humans to always try to push their mm. own limits and see how far they can get. Mm-hmm. But for some reason, that is the case. And I chose rock climbing to do that. So I'm trying to be, you know, the best that I can and push my limits as far as I can. Yeah. I mean, and I think that's, I think it's an important thing for for people to be able to see again, you know, that's I think that's the importance of this film. Uh, it really struck me watching it that there's a there are there's a lot to learn that the general climbing audience can pull out of this film by watching you try these routes, watching your process watching you fail, watching you succeed. And something that's been a pet peeve of mine lately, and I just want to hear your take on it because I think the film really touches on it, is that I've like curated my Instagram feed to weed out all of the moonboard videos so I don't have to watch them anymore. And instead I'm watching all of these people who are like, it's all about the process. I didn't sin today, but that's okay. It's all about the journey. And they're very happy for some reason that they're not accomplishing things. They're so focused on the process being important that they forget that the outcome is really important. And if, if you aren't sending, then maybe your process is just wrong. Maybe you're doing something wrong. Well, I guess that depends. If you lose the focus on the actual goal, then I guess the process is in some ways wrong but I've experienced that setting your focus too much on the outcome kind of hinders you to actually succeed and if the way to the goal is not important anymore then you won't get there so I think there's two types of people like the types of people that are too much focused on the process Mm -hmm. and then there's people like oh I'm one I would say who is very often too much focused on the actual goal and Mm -hmm. I kind of should focus more on the process and um, realize through that that the process itself is important too and it might get me to my goal if I um, focus more on the process rather than only the goal. Yeah, I agree with that completely. What makes you think you're someone who's maybe too focused on the goal? 
because I really just want to fucking send, you know? <laughs> and I really get nervous if I don't send. So that means it shows me that I want to do the route really bad. And I'm thinking very often about climbs that I, you know, hadn't done or haven't done. And um, I think that shows me that the process is i mean obviously the process is still important but yeah i'm very much goal orientated and yep. i think that was the reason for why i've not been trying very hard mm. projects in the last few years just because i was afraid that the outcome might be that i won't climb the the route or the boulder so therefore i was scared of the process because i thought okay can i deal with the fact that i might not climb it and till recently i was not fine with you know just the possibility of not climbing it so only just pick roots and boulders where i knew that the outcome will be that i climb it yeah what do you think has changed that's made it start to get better for you to accept the fact that you might not do it i think what changed is that i know if i want to climb a limit i kind of have to pick projects where the outcome is not certain and well then you know I don't know whether I'll be able to climb it or not. So I think that was a sh like a big part of it. I mean, if you always know that you will climb the route or the bolo that you're trying, then it can't be a limit. Because if it is your limit, right. then you should not be certain that you will be able to climb it. Yeah, totally. Ken, what, what changes have you seen in Alex throughout the filming of this? It, on a scale from one to ten. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure there's been a lot of Dances, yes. <laughs> growth. <laughs> oh man! Don't open the can, Chris. Don't open the can. I'm opening the can. That's that's my job, Ken. <laughs> um. This film has been an incredibly complicated process for us. Um, we almost lost our friendship. Yeah. Um, which was You're really... dealing with some tough subjects. Yeah, for sure. And it's also like... I had expectations of Alex. And to be put it quite bluntly, Alex didn't prioritize my expectations. You right. Know? And so He just he, wants to fucking send. Yeah, and he's just like... And I think in the end, we've come, I think we probably, I th I'm sure Alex could say the exact same thing about me, but um, we had to navigate some really touchy things about like each of our e egos, <clears throat> you know, um, our end goals with it all. Yeah. And um, I think we both learned a lot. And I think Alex also came away in the end um, like really processing the fears he has around not climbing roots and just not giving a fuck and um, just knowing that he's capable and that it's going to happen when, he needs, when it needs to happen. And uh, for me, and watching him all these years, I think that's what I've wanted from him the most, hmm. to be honest. I mean... I'm not. Gonna say, I'm not trying to say that I'm, I handed that to him, but sure. I think you know we shot on this thing for two years. <clears throat> yeah, and it was kind of at the point we started shooting when Alex said, "Okay, I'm ready to project something," and I was like, "Okay, right. let's make a film." I'm gonna project it for five days. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> seven. <laughs> <clears throat> um, <laughs> so there's been a lot of ups and downs, and a lot of no's, and a lot of yeses, and a lot of change in plans, and the film is pretty different than we had originally thought it would look like what did you think it was going to look like That's all we can say. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i think the historical perspective was always part of it and um i have never seen alex fail sure and so i had full confidence that you know the the deck that we had built would come together into a film right and not everything works out but it was also a lot of pressure on alex film crew following him forever mm -hmm. two years i mean we lived at his parents house for a month mm -hmm. and um 
it's incredible that they <laughs> that we've you know we became this big family and that everyone was so involved and um but yeah there's a lot you know there's a lot of complications there's world cups and there's olympic qualifications and um uh, and injuries um i wasn't going to say that um <laughs> and injuries and you know so things change and not everything goes as planned and and then you have it's a team effort and we decided to sit on opposite benches for a little bit sure well i think that's a really mature decision like and the fact that you were able to come back onto the same bench is literally yeah li <laughs> literally right now on the same bench <laughs> is massively important when so you set out this you create this deck and it's like we're going to do this this and this you're going to send this this and this that's what the film's going to be yeah, it was, I mean, I, I mean, every film has its, especially in the climbing world, every film basically has the same freaking formula, you know? Right, like, sure. So show, show a little struggle, you show some humor, and then you like, you show like the big send and succeeding. It's the hero's journey kind of, you know? Right, yep. And I think <clears throat> we have a hero's journey, but I think the hero's journey is in a different way. It's, it's well, more, I think it's a much more human hero's journey. I think so too. I I mean, just to put it bluntly and sorry that I've subjected you to this, Alex, but I'm really tired of like the superhero yeah. film about rock climbers. It's Me like, too. it's like people are people and they try really, really hard. And like, and I think that's really inspiring to me. Absolutely. Same. So I assume it's inspiring to other people. Yeah. And so it's a full philosophical hero's journey, I think, you know, and a lot of vulnerability, like Alex really opened up and, and grew a lot through this film. Like, He's an incredible human, huge heart. Like his friends are like the most important thing to him in the world and clipping the anchors. But um, I feel like he really opened up and, and like shed some layers and let us in during this process. And, yeah. Uh, and it's a risk. And I appreciate him trusting me with his story because it's a super big honor and, uh, and it's not something to take lightly. Well, I... I agree, and I'm glad that he trusted you with that um, because I think you told a masterful story. And I was surprised by the amount that you opened up in it. I, even as it started to get more into the emotion, more into the, the more human element, I thought... I wonder if it's just going to be this really dry German humor that I really love deflecting all of the emotion. Like, is it is it just going to be a joke and then move on and show the send? How's this going to work out? And that's that's not how it worked, and I, I really appreciate that. Were you, Alex, was there extra pressure on you? Did you feel any extra external pressure when you were expected to get the sins on film i mean of course there's additional pressure because i knew that it would have been cool to get certain sins on film and i mean through all the last two years through all you know the shit that kind of happened with kind of shifting focus a little bit towards the olympics and wanting to qualify for that and yeah. then getting a few injuries when you know I was kind of time to go rock climbing again and that kind of all made it harder and harder and sure. I obviously felt pressure that I knew that those scents should have been on film and that should have been the story and I was just not able to deliver in that case or I mean I was just not able as much as I wanted it I was not able to climb those routes and get back on them so I'm sure there was additional pressure but um, I think the biggest pressure was always from myself because Mm -hmm. I still wanted to climb those routes for myself and that didn't happen till now. But, um, well, like I said, for now the focus is um, on the Olympics sure. a little bit. So we'll see how that goes next year. Yeah. When, when you weren't, when the sins don't happen and it's not what you expected and there is emotion, there is anger or 
whatever it is, whatever that feeling is, do you think it was hard for you based on the culture of climbing to that point to release that for the camera to show it? I mean, for sure, showing emotions in front of a camera or on camera is always not easy, but um, at some point, even if you know you're getting filmed, you just can't hold back your emotions because, I mean, in case of climbing, I just really wanted it bad, so... Yeah. I mean, all that screaming I did in Jumbo Love, that was because I wanted to get up there and because I felt like I should have gotten up there and I didn't. So whether there was a camera pointing at me or not, didn't really change anything right uh emotion wise anyway but um yeah i guess i think it is good to show people that people like me as well struggle with the roots and fail and are not psyched and not happy sometimes yeah i mean i think it's really important and i think that even though i know that and ken and i talked about this before you showed up that when you go to a crag and you're climbing, the crag quiets down, all you hear are camera shutters. People already line up to watch you climb. However, we as humans can only give so much love to a robotic figure. And showing that emotion, I think you're just going to get mobbed so I think people are going to recognize you as even more human and well, so probably, I would just be prepared probably because <laughs> I am human and not a robotic figure <laughs> sometimes that's very unfortunate because <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> I'm sure skin would grow faster if it would be a machine but <laughs> yeah no shit that would be amazing I know <laughs> well here I am eh <laughs> Not not fit at the moment. That's how I feel like anyway. You know, I've as well got my bad days and um, that's how it is. Yeah, it was really interesting because we spent so much time together and traveled and had so much fun. Oh, sure. Like we laugh a ton, mm -hmm. you know, like and just... You can see it in the film. But I... this is the funny thing is like Alex and, he, Alex and I had even made, done some filming together and tons of stills and... <clears throat> And it's always just really fun and goofing off and, you know, and day one of filming for the big production and you show up with the red and, you know, B cam and all these things. And now she's just like, what the fuck is this? Yeah. I just thought you were going to like show up with like a little mirrorless camera and we were going to roll around the world. And it was like, nope, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So it changed and it took a long time to desensitize that. Like I had fortunately like he welcomed Chelsea and I like into his life for a long time. And we were able to like slowly, slowly gather that material. But that was the last thing I was expecting, expecting actually was like, was to find just the, really the openness in daily life in front of the camera. And the big camera was a hindrance for sure. Yeah, I bet. But when he's climbing, he's so focused. He doesn't even know I'm there. It's kind of amazing. You know, last night when I was when I was letting people know what time the film was going to show and I knew that there was a buzz going around that Alex Magos was here and was going to be showing this film and I knew that if I just said rock punked people might not know what I was talking about because they know it as the Alex Magos film. Whereas really it is kind of like the Ken Etzel film exactly. featuring Alex Magos. <laughs> and it, it sort of pained me a little bit every time I said the Alex Magos film because I think I know that I know how much work you did on it and that was before I saw the film and now it would be even harder for me to say that because even though you're not appearing on camera, there's so much of you in there. Like for like one second maybe. Right. And there's so much of you in there and it's it's all about how you're seeing Alex change and struggle and fail and succeed. And I mean, yeah, it really is not my film in that case, you know, it's a film featuring me, but it is <clears throat> Ken's film about me. Like my film about him, that's still a work in progress. 
<laughs> we'll wait for that and then you can announce at Rocktoberfest in a few years you can the announce Canetzel film. the Canetzel film yeah. <laughs> shot by Alex Magos what are, be, what are we going to call it? Um, behind the scenes Shit red. show <laughs> 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 we're going to call it road point behind the scenes <laughs> <clears throat> I think people would watch it to be honest oh um, sure it'll be a banger <laughs> I, I just want to say and like I would appreciate if you added this, but I understand. But like Chelsea Jolly, yeah, was yeah, there. Yeah. She was there Absolutely. the whole time. She unfortunately is not here now. And then the editor, Khalil Hudson, he just won an Emmy. He's a master storyteller. Like he yeah. really brought it to life. And um, and there's you know there's so many people, other people behind the scenes. But it was, I really feel like the three of us and Alex Lowther really came together and you know that really kept the ship floating i think the main story was based on my relationship with alex and how i had seen it and you know and i think that was the base but like it's so many people's film not just mine but yeah i appreciate you saying that because i i am just trapped in this little bubble that we have and and i haven't gotten to meet them so i appreciate that well, let's be honest, without Chelsea, it would have been a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> well, I see the two of you now, so I know that it would have been a shit show. I know, we would have gotten we would have gotten anywhere, I think, without Chelsea. There would have been so many <clears throat> one-arm pull-ups, so it would have been amazing. I know, it would have been like a proper man film. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad we got emotion instead of just a man film. <laughs> No, but I don't want to take up too much of your guys' time here. I appreciate you both sitting down. And hopefully we can do this again. And Alex, I would love to sit down with you again and chat about some other things. So, Cool. Thank you for uh, having us on the same bench. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we go back to um, the shashlik and to like the meat sticks? <laughs> <laughs> Those meat sticks are good. <laughs> you had a plate of food larger than any plate of food I might have seen in quite a while. Um, that was small by normal standards. <laughs> and actually, to be um, honest, the plate size was exactly the same plate as everybody else's plate. They just put, more, put on more. <laughs> You're exactly right. I know. <laughs> so literal. <laughs> Alright, thanks you guys. No Thank worries. you, Chris. <laughs> Thank you. Big, gigantic thanks to both Ken and Alex for for sitting down. Um, you know, we were right in the middle of a VIP party after Rocktoberfest, and they definitely did not have to go outside in the dark and sit down and have a conversation with me, and I appreciate them doing it. And I appreciate them being so open and willing to talk about things that we don't normally get to hear about in climbing films. And... And you know, that's that's one of the things I really loved about this film, especially after getting to watch it again last night while sitting in a quiet place and watching it, um, was that we get to see the inner workings of someone who inspires us. In this, in this day and age of, you know, 24-hour news cycles and short attention spans and we get to see everybody's sins on video constantly you know every day you can get on the internet and see another thing that might inspire you to try harder and I think that's amazing but we've we don't often get to see the inner workings the challenges the struggles and and I miss that uh, in sports uh, one of the only other films I've seen that does a really great job of that is Project Mina, which I've talked about on here before. And, and I rank this film right up there with that as two of my absolute favorite climbing films I've ever seen and likely ever will. Um, I hope that there's a follow-up to this. I hope we get to see um, what Alex goes through uh, in trying to send the big project in in Seuss and and I hope that you know he continues to push and try to define his limits and I hope that Ken's there to capture it because I really 
appreciate Ken's ability to tell a story and to connect with his subject. And, and I'd like to talk more to Ken about that in the future. And I suspect that I will. And hopefully I get to talk to Alex again. There's so much I want to talk about, like why Taylor Swift is his favorite musician. <sighs> you know, he, he can't do all the things right. But seriously, I appreciate this film, you guys, and I appreciate you putting it out there and allowing us into this world uh, for just a little bit and just a, a little glimpse into it. All of you out there listening can find a link directly to the film right there in the show notes in your pocket supercomputers. I assume most of you are already following Alex on the Instagrams. You should go follow Ken as well. Um, I'm sure there are more amazing things to come. Like I mentioned in the beginning of this episode, if you know somebody who could use this scholarship to the Red River Pump program with Drew Mack, brought to you by Petzl, then please share the link with them. We want to get this scholarship in the right hands. You all know where you can find us, powercompanyclimbing.com. You can find us on the Facebooks, the Instagrams, and the Pinterest at Power Company Climbing. And you can tweet at us all day, all night about how much you like the Rot Punked film, we will not see your tweets because we don't tweet. We scream like eagles. Yeah.